Next, we are on episode 28. This one called Ozone and Reef Tanks. Crystal clear tanks, but at a cost. Was the, That was the 52 Weeks original title for that episode. Uh, here's where we're thinking about uh, Ozone at today. Uh, you know, this is a space that we haven't really mm -mm. explored in detail. And it's a... It, 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 it's, it's been a, a long-standing tool in the hobby. I've uh, people use it for a long time. Yeah, uh, like when I went and visited Live Aquaria, they were using it on their skimmers and mm. those big, huge RK K2 things yeah. and stuff. Uh, a core belief here, though, is ozone is like running carbon twenty-four-seven, uh, but the best way of doing it still isn't clear. Yeah. So I'll repeat it again. <laughs> uh, the Ozone is like running carbon 24-7. It doesn't need to be changed, but the best way of using it still isn't clear. Uh, there's some safety issues with it, both for the tank, maybe for your house, uh, but uh, it's not as well understood, yeah. but man, there's some attractive pieces to it. Yeah, this is a topic that I have a lot to learn on myself. <laughs> yeah, so what matters most here is Amazon, uh, ozone, which is, uh, for those who don't know, ozone, like uh, oxygen is O2, meaning two, two oxygens yep. bound together. Ozone is three oxygens bound together. And one is just itching to get off. One wants off so bad. <laughs> and it will oxidize the surface of whatever that it pop, pops off of and attaches yep. to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, ozone also, if you ever smelled a lightning storm. Rain, that fresh rain. That smell yeah. is ozone, it's yep. created. Yeah, when it, lightning breaks through the atmosphere it uh, breaks up those molecules those oxygen molecules creates uh, ozone. i love that smell uh it smells very not, fresh not in my house though. also ozone a very very popular in home uh, uh oh yeah uh, like uh, home fil air filtration yeah the button that says ion on it yeah is, uh, ozone. is creating ozone ions yeah. in most cases yeah. in fact when you used to go to sharper image at the mall and you could smell what smelled like fresh air uh, or lightning storm coming out of it. It was the sea of all the, the ozones running. Ozone generated up front called the ionic breeze. Yeah, yeah. Right? there's a. Uh, I mean, that's a ozone is a uh, disaster or type of uh, recovery. Like when your fires in house, uh, smoking smells in cars. Uh, they use ozone to pull mm. all of those smells out to go break them down. Probably yeah. 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 Mm. All right. So but we use uh, it on the tanks. Uh, so what matters most, ozone will keep the, the tank crystal clear in a manner which you didn't know possible. So where carbon will generally ebb and flow, I'll mm -hmm. change the carbon, it'll get dirty, I'll change the carbon, it'll get dirty, change the carbon, or never change the carbon, it'll Talk always about dirty. perpetual clean right? with ozone. Yeah, ozone, man, this thing would be crystal clear 24-7, 365 days a year. You will always have <laughs> pristine, crystal clear water that highlights the corals as best as possible. You bought, you bought that Starfire glass for a reason, or that yeah. low iron glass for a reason. You got Starfire water now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so ozone will achieve that for yeah. you. Uh, what matters also most here is the tank will smell fresh as well. Hmm. Odors won't come out of this thing uh, any longer. That you know, often like a tank will have kind of like a greenish smell to it. Yeah. Uh, if you're doing it terribly, it will smell even worse. Worse, uh, <laughs> but uh, ozone will eliminate the odors that come from the tank in mm. a vast majority of cases as well. Ozone breaks down organic toxins. This is mm. that free roaming o or uh, oxygen molecule. Well, uh, or yeah, the, it will break down an organic toxin. So, like an organic toxin that comes from the ah, corals. Yeah. So if you're yeah, so if you have coral warfare, you did a whole bunch of fragging and all of that slime that you always that you see coming off of the corals because they got stressed out. Mm -hmm. Gone. Well, so in the nature, like or in the reef, like what will happen is you'll see all these corals growing like right up on top of each other, and they're all emitting a toxin to maintain their space. So like somehow, some miraculous way, they all stay about this far away yeah, from yeah, each yeah. other, right? Yeah. It's because they're emitting toxins to say, hey, get away from me, yeah. right? Well, in the ocean, they dissipate within about a half inch. Current's gone, right? right? Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, current takes it off. In an aquarium, it's just, they just it's stay in there. Stagnant, it's recirculating in the up. tank. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, and it really depends on the other corals. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, this is what kind of the mixed tanks are not, or while they're the most attractive tank to do, mm -hmm. they're sometimes the hardest to do. 
are almost always the hardest to do. Yeah. You're trying to create an environment for a, you know, 60 different types of organisms in within one tank, you know, perfect, uh, no lack of toxins, lack of coral warfare, perfect lighting, perfect flow for things that don't live in the same areas at all. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in this case though, uh, you will never ever worry about organic toxins from the corals again, because they will break them down into things that are not toxic. Uh, uh, also what matters most here is ozone without or P control is a terrible, terrible idea. So mm -hmm. you're going to want to uh, like, you know, monitor ORP. Yeah. So for those who don't know, uh, ORP is really the only thing that most people use ORP for is ozone. Yeah, I don't know if otherwise well, what you're going to do it for. Well, we've, we've said, you know, use it you know, in the past, like if a big giant fish dies or there's some big giant dump of food in your tank or something like that, you'd probably see it in, in ORP, but... So ORP means oxidation reduction potential. Hmm. Potential, like it's not even a real thing. It's yeah. just the potential for something to happen, <laughs> right? Uh, okay, so the best I read is, I, if I can I quote this right, is a long, long time ago, I read it, our Randy Holmes, our, our Farley article, and like people will tell you that ORP is generally, is a representative of how clean your water is. And he will tell you that that is not true. Mm. Uh, what ORP is, is oxidation reduction potential. So it's the ratio of amount of like organics and pollutants in the water to the amount of oxidants in the water. Mm. So if uh, I had less, I'm going to make these numbers up, but like let's pretend I had 10, you know, pollutants in or organics in the water, I had 10 oxidants in the water. Well, these things are in balance, right? And like, you'd say that that's probably a fairly low pollution and I'm getting a 350 uh, ORP or number or whatever mm -hmm. it is. All right, well, what if I had, instead of 10, I had 10 million pollutants in the tank? Well, now that's dirty water. Yeah. But if I also had 10 million oxidants, still I'd still balanced. get the same 350 ORP number, meaning the water isn't clear. <laughs> it's filled with 10 million pollutants, but the potential to oxidize them is the same because I have the same amount of oxidizers mm -hmm. in the water. And I'm probably butchering that, butchering that to some degree, but the reason for that is, is it's not a representative of how clean the water is. A representative of cleaning the water is probably you just already know how much garbage you put in there right. and how well you maintain it. Right, 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 right. Uh, but what it does do is tell you how many oxidants are in there to help combat all of the other things that you're doing. Uh, and that's why you want to have uh, the ORP controller is because if you get too many oxidants, it's going to be really bad for all the organisms in the tank. It's like breathing too much of the ionic breeze is not good for you. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, too, breathing too much ozone is not good for you. A little bit isn't going to harm you. You mm. see it in quality air controls and stuff when like, you know, your city, your phone blows up and tells you don't go outside because mm. uh, air quality is poor. It's usually related to too much ozone yeah. in the air. Yeah. Okay, and it could be other things, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, without the ORP control, without the ability to measure the amount of oxidants to the organics. And shut it off if you're, there's an imbalance, a big point, it's right? It's an unnecessary risk. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't do it unless you're going to monitor an ORP. Uh, also, what matters most? is removing the ozone from the air is a good idea. This is that carbon on the end of your reactor, on the end of your skimmer, if you're using it that way, right? Yeah, so most most people that use ozone mm -hmm. these days use it on their skimmer. I uh, will tell you later why I don't think that's the greatest idea, but uh, they use it on their skimmer, and then all the air coming out of the top now of the skimmer actually has ozone in it. Uh, and it's really debatable. Like, people will tell you ozone isn't good for you, yet, like, Tons and tons of air filters have like, ozone. I have that. a button on it that produce ozone to get rid of smells in your house. Yeah. Uh, mm. So uh, it's a little bit of debate. I like to just skip the debate because if you put a bag of carbon on the top or even like a retro, a little cup on the top of your cup of the carbon, Problem it solved. will remove the ozone and you won't. And you can smell it. You can buy an ozone alarm if you want to do, but you can like literally smell it if it's not working. Yep. So, uh, but. Uh, I would do that. Yeah. I would remove it from the air. Uh, ozone reactor, better than a skimmer. Uh, basically a chamber for ozone to interact with the water. So it's, it's probably like a, a needle wheel pump, basically almost like a skimmer, just not pulling organics. 
Well, there's a couple of different I types of ozone reactors. I haven't seen one. I haven't seen an ozone reactor, actually, personally. Yeah, but, they're rare. Yeah. And so a ozone reactor can... Ozone most commonly is just somebody whips, uh, sucks ozone through the machine and into your poaching skimmer and it whisks together and it works really great. There's ports on, yeah. the, in, on the Venturi made for this. Yeah, the problem is, is I've found that it destroys, you know, the performance of the protein skimmer. Ah. So we're great at ozone, but I haven't found it to be really good. Which is the opposite of them. what it was supposed to do, right? Yeah, the protein skimmer is supposed to pull out turds, uh, not necessarily be a reactant well, for is, ozone. Was it known that, uh, was it understood that, or, or, uh, that ozone oh. was supposed to ha even improve the performance of your skimmer? Okay, so <clears throat> in an ideal world, right, what would happen is you'd pull in just the right amount of ozone into your skimmer. Mm. And in that case, what would happen is you've got a bunch of organics in there that may be may positively, negatively charged, and it will change some of those things over mm. into something that's more likely to attach to a bubble, right? Yeah. But if you use too much ozone, it will change them all over to something, or I shouldn't say attach to a bubble, attach themselves uh, and create larger organic molecules, which to are be easier to for bubbles. the yeah. bubble to remove. Yeah. Okay. But if you change all of them, well, then they repel from each other and it makes it harder for uh, the skimmer to uh, remove. Uh, it's been my case that trying to m walk that balance uh, has not been productive for yeah. me. And most of the time when I put ozone on a skimmer, it actually reduces the skimmer's performance. Uh, that is, I, and I've done it quite a few times now. Yeah. Uh, and I, every time it's been that case. <laughs> so in that spirit, there's two types reactor. of uh, ozone reactors. One, you can go get an uh, ozone reactor that's really complex, uh, meaning uh, usually what they would do is fill it with some, some chamber and it fill it with this bio trickle bale, down. the trickle water yeah. over it. You'll pump uh, ozone into it. You'll use an air pump to put it under two or three PSI. So there's actual osmotic pressure pushing the ozone essentially into, into the, the mold, thin layer yeah. of water. Yeah. And it will work really awesome and be a giant pain in the butt to maintain. <laughs> uh, I think actually what I would do if I was going to run ozone at this point is I'd buy the cheapest skimmer I can find. A little tiny guy. Uh, a little cheap, cheap, cheap skimmer and just yeah. uh, set it up to never skim anything. Yeah. I have a real skimmer and then I have the skimmer over here that's just whisking ozone in and, and you know solving my problem that way. Yeah. Really, really easy. Doesn't affect my skimmer and I don't have to maintain mm. this bio bale pressure, all this other garbage. Well, if, you use a, if you use a secondary uh, skimmer uh, for this purpose, then rather than configuring the top of that skimmer lid for carbon or something, I just take the lid off and put carbon right there in the neck. Oh, done. done. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Cut the little putter out, put a bag of carbon in there. <laughs> done. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could retrofit the thing <clears throat> super easy that way. Yeah. You're not going to ever have it skim. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So uh, hard lessons, though, with ozone is one, in relation to what you just said, is mm -hmm. wet carbon doesn't work very well at removing ozone in my experience. So if the skimmer produces so much moisture that eventually all the carbon just gets like soaked in water, it doesn't produce the ozone smell or amount of ozone into the room. So this long. is this is carbon in the air on the on the output of the of the reactor or the skimmer, not carbon yeah. at the actual underwater at the water output of the skimmer. Yeah, usually what people will do, and uh, you can debate <coughs> whether both of these things need to be done, and we're going to debate that in just a second. Is does uh, most people will attempt to remove the ozone from? you know, the output of the skimmer on both ends, the air that's coming out the top of the skimmer cup, right? Uh, as well as the water that's coming out of the skimmer. Like I want to protect the house from the ozone and I also, or the people who live in it, I also want to protect uh, the fish inhabitants from ozone going into the water. Okay, so if you put the carbon on the top and eventually it gets soaked in water, it doesn't work that well at yeah. pulling out the ozone. Again, you'll know because it smells. You can also buy a little alarm if you want. Hmm. Uh, the part that I've never really bought into, and I, and I can't tell you whether I'm right or wrong in this, I just haven't bought into the carbon on the output of the underwater. reactor yeah. or the skimmer that's underwater because, A, it didn't remove the ozone very well from when the carbon is wet in air. Uh, B, the half-life of ozone, like it literally is three oxygens. One of them is desperately trying to get off. As soon as it hits that it, water. As soon as yeah. it hits seawater that's filled with organics, Some like a dirty aquarium, charged, yeah. 
the chances of it popping <laughs> off and the half light of it so in cool. the aquarium is probably really, really, really low. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and uh, another point actually is that uh, I think we'll hit on this one, but I'll share it now anyway. Is a lot of carbon is actually like dust. It's like even when it, if it comes in a pellet, obviously the carbon didn't come out of the ground as a pellet. Right, right, right. Right. So the carbon actually has been the coal, and they carbonize it, and they crush it up, and then they glue it back together in these little pellets. pellets. Well, the problem with ozone is it can actually eat the binder on the pellet. Oh, okay. Right. And yeah. so it will. It will. It depends on the binder that you use, and it depends on uh, you know like the some carbon is actually like the little granules, like the sad part is actually even the broken up little granules, that is also sometimes powdered and glued back together. <laughs> uh, and so you don't really know, but like, I haven't found the perfect carbon that won't fall apart uh, from, you know, putting carbon on the output of the reactor or the skimmer mm. without breaking up the binder. And like, I haven't really tested that many of them. I just don't know. and. There's so many unknowns here. You can start to see, like, at the beginning of it, I always get really excited about the ozone conversation. Yeah, yeah. By the end of it, I'm like, ah, I don't just don't know. Still don't know. Yeah. Uh, it is still, like, it's a little bit of, uh, you know, trailblazing yeah. here, even though it's been around for decades. <laughs> Frontier to travel down. Uh, hard lesson learned here is uh, you'd feel better with an ozone alarm. I'd feel better with an ozone alarm. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're cheap is the problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you get an alarm people. that actually tells you how much ozone's in the mm -hmm. room and it's like a fire alarm. Yeah, uh, probably not the cheapest things. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think they're particularly cheap. If they are, somebody should post huh. one. Uh, also, a hard lesson, though. No one knows the effect of ozone on livestock. Uh, and I'm not confident that the carbon actually removes Removes it. the, yeah. The only piece I'd say, I've seen people run carbon ozone on a lot of different systems, including I watched them do it at Live Aquaria, and the corals and the fish are doing just fine. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a tendency to not believe that uh, uh, the ozone is actually harming any of the livestock in the water. But nobody really knows, so there's always that, like, that question in the back of your head, you know? Yeah. You know, what the effect <laughs> of that is. Uh, there you go. Uh, if I have carbon on the output, do I even need ozone? Yeah, like carbon is, uh, well, is this the binder? If it's eating up the binder, then what's the point? Or if well, the carbon's doing the exact same thing, cleaning the water, taking away the smell of the tank, do I need ozone? That is the part. It's three bucks in carbon is removing the smell and making it crystal clear as well. It's just doing it on an ebb and flow process. Yep. The benefit of the ozone is that it always keeps it there, yeah. right? But if I'm doing this really well and I'm putting all this carbon on the output of the skimmer or uh, output of the ozone reactor in the water that's going through it, why am I messing around with the ozone? I'm still using carbon. <laughs> I, I don't get it, right? So. Yes, it'll be more smooth and whatever. I, this is where you can see this start to fall apart yeah. for me. Like, yeah. I, I really want this to work. I really like the idea of crystal clear 24 7. I really like the idea of no odor, but then, like, I can what the hell am I doing? The three bucks in carbon point versus time. Uh, air desiccant and the generator and changing your corona discharge. And oh, all yeah, I'm going to be into this for 600 bucks. Too. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure. Secondary skimmer. Yeah, I, I don't know. This okay. Ne this next one kind of feeds that for you, too. Yeah, okay, so it's if I had ozone on the output, do I even need ozone? Uh, and ozone never even helped my skimmer before. Both of those things we already kind of covered. Yeah. You know, so in the end, I'd be dying to know if you guys would consider ozone. Do you think it's something that, uh, is it even worth Randy and I like Exploring? diving into with yeah. BRS TV investigates and finding out the answers? Or is three bucks in carbon the real solution and this is just like some white fairy tale we're chasing? I know my answer. I'll, I'll use carbon. I, I, I mean, I'm a gear junkie, so it's like the calcium reactor thing. Do I really need a calcium reactor when I can just put five gallons of two-part in there and put some trace and minor elements inside and I'm done? Uh, do I need all that calcium reactor gear and all that? Well, no, but I really like it because I'm a gear junkie and I like to fiddle with all that type of stuff. If you could give me 100% confidence that it was both safe for my house and my household as well as safe for all the fish and coral in there, I'd use it for sure. Mm -hmm. Like I, I would, I don't, I want to eliminate the ebbs and flows. I want it to be crystal clear all the time. I never want it to smell. And so if you could give me the confidence in it. So the question really is, is could BRS TV investigates 
give us that level of confidence. And it's something that we'll have to think about. Yeah. If you guys got ideas for experiments, uh, share them in the comments. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So the big question is, what's next? 